You're watching The NPK Show, episode eight, season one, and we're in full bloom today. Full bloom, because it's the flowering cycle. Oh, it's the exciting part. So no more laziness from Steve, no more sitting on his backside, vegging out. I enjoyed it last week, it was comfortable, it was relaxing, environment was perfect. Well, All this, I needed was a bit of Netflix. Well, this week it's time to fully flourish, blossom and bloom. Oh, that was quite a mouthful, wasn't it? Oh, it, is. it was indeed. Let's get into it. Let's go and have a look into the lab and around the shop and see what's in bloom and see the different stages of flowering and top tips from me and Thomas on how to get the best out of your plants. Okay, so what's this episode really about then? It's about the flowering cycle. Okay. We're changing plants from vegetative cycle, and if they're photoperiodic, that means that they've been on 18 hours of light with six hours of darkness, and we're changing to 12 hours of light with 12 hours of darkness. It's the darkness that's important. That's what kicks in flowering. And we're also gonna talk about the transition, phase two weeks of flowering, very important phase as we move from veg to flower. You've got the main bulk of flowering, which is where you're going to up REC. We're going to kick it in with the uh, with the higher newts and the high MPKs. And we're going to finish with a flush and finish with a harvest. That's pretty much flowering in a nutshell. So, like I said, what's this all about this episode? In normal language. Okay. I think it's best to go into the lab and have a look at what's going on because it's the most important phase. This is the part that growers and gardeners need to do. It's all about the flowers, the edible parts of the plant. Um, let's, let's see some food. Let's see some stuff. Let's go. So we're back. It's a flowering phase. For me. Today. Thank you very much. That's the first time in nearly 10 years that you bought me a bunch of flowers. No, not really. That's just to demonstrate it to everybody that if you start off good, you can end up with good flowers. Ah, so you're on about the veg period like we talked about last week. Yeah. Because this bed of dahlias that we've got outside here, this was all the work was done in the veg period. And the key thing I want to show you is the products that we used because you don't always have to overdo it with EC. And we only used two products. Biosis Instant Microbe Tea. We made up 100 litres for each bed once. And then just as they start to form buds, we used this tea brew by Extreme Garden. We brewed this for two days, and that's great for in the flowering period. And that's literally all we used. And it just goes to show a great vegetative life, along with great products. You get some amazing flowers. You really do get some good results. And that's the main emphasis as well, because once you enter into the flowering stage, there's no going back. So if your plant hasn't been fully prepared and fully set in a good motion where it's going to have a good life in the flowering stage, you're going to be hindered before you, you finish. So our top tip is when you enter the flowering stage is to make sure that you give your plants the best lease of life so when it enters into that zone, they're going to have a happy, rewarding, flowerful life. Flowerful, I love that word. So if you stick to the crucials in the vegetative period, Go back, watch last week's episode, really pay attention to the veg techniques that we told you to use, and you too can have beautiful flowers just like MPK. So, once again, back into the jungle. Back in the jungle. I mean lab. Yeah, the lab. We're back in the lab. Yeah. And it's the flowering period. Yeah. It's one of the most exciting phases of a plant's life. Well, I haven't had to use my magic trick with the wand to make you disappear. We've got this nice big plant. Yeah. She's doing a lovely job of hiding this Mork, isn't she? Yeah. Let's move her out the way. <sighs> right, that's me foot. I'm being shot. What am I going to do? Here's the chair. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Mr. Practical. Big help to me, you know. So, flowering sites. The flowering phase. What is the first part of the flowering cycle? I'll show you've got the transition phase. Exactly. From going from veg to flower. Yep. Yeah. It's when your plant is realising, hmm, Things have changed a little bit. Yeah, I've now got me eyes closed for a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the photoperiodic plants, definitely. Yeah. So some plants respond by flowering with more hours of darkness. That's a photoperiodic plant. Some plants, like these chilies, they'll either produce chilies when they're genetically ready, or you can sometimes induce flowering in chilies by changing the environment, changing the temperature. Yeah. And traditionally, though, 
for photoperiodic plants, we like to give them 12 hours of darkness to reduce yeah. flowering. And for the two weeks that we do that, the plant starts to adjust its hormones and adjust what it's doing with its nutrients and starts to do less growing and more of these flowering sites and producing lovely buds and chilies. Yeah. So the veg pet part, which we spoke about last week, has built the foundations for these plants. We've given them a lovely foundation, we've built this house with cement. Yeah. And now it's time to let the plant do its job and steer the wheel of flowering to get to the end, which is the flush period. And we, whilst we're in the flowering period, and we come into the transition period, there's products that we can use mm. to enhance these plants. So we can double the amount of flowering sites, so we can double the amount of fruits that we can get mm -hmm. at the end of our harvest. What have you got for them? So, one of my favourite products um, that I like to use is by Buddha's Tree, and it is flower based. Now this product, it's not really expensive, but it goes a long way. And you don't, you only need to use it for the first two weeks in the flower period. Mm. It even says you can use it in the vegging period, the very last week of vegging, to start to put the nutrients into the plant. Uh, you can do this. The plant, the product is cheap enough, and you don't have to use hardly anything. So it's well worth giving it a try. When we've done it, we've been using it in the first two weeks of flower, and the amount of flower and sight that it produces is just phenomenal. So it's up to you. It's the grower's choice. Uh, we use it for the first two weeks. Great results but you can also use it at the end of the veg as well. Brilliant product, very cheap, don't have to use hardly anything. And you don't have to take any of your products out of your regime. No, you, you can just have this on top. Can, you can just put this straight in and you can use it with all your original products that you use in the first place. Yeah. So you've got your flowering sites. Now it's time to build on those flowering sites. Mm -hmm. This is the longest period of the flowering stage. And we start adjusting our nutrients as well. Mm -hmm. So it's all about back to EC, and back to pH. You've got your wand. I've always got my wand. You've always got it ready into hand, haven't you? Yeah. What do you see we giving our plants in flowering? Well, on my wand, we have my EC range. And when we are at max flowering, we will be at 2.2 to 2.4. We will never exceed Mm -hmm. that range very very rarely yeah there's a very few occasions the tomato plant's the best example yeah we can take her up to three but as a general rule of thumb never go above 2.4 like we said last week the osmotic pressure within the plant is gonna go through the roof and you're gonna start to get wilted leaves so you're gonna use your truncheon to navigate your nutrient content within your solution perfect so we adjust our nutrients as well our base nutrients are going to start increasing. Sometimes we change to a flowering base nutrient as well. So Dutch Pro do a Cocoa Hydro Grow A and B, and they also do a Bloom A and B as well. So they give very specific base nutrients for the different stages of life. Mm. Remember from last week, your base feed is your roast dinner. Don't start adding hundreds of additives without really looking at your base nutrients. But get your base nutrients sorted, and there's some really good additives that you can use. But if you want these to grow really big and strong and ripen nicely, you're going to need to use a product to build up on this. And this is Dutch Pro Explode. This is what we'd call a boost product. Now, this product is very, very good at doing what it says. It makes your flowers explode into life. Explode in size. In size, in weight, in flavour. The great thing about this product is one mil per litre. Yeah. So it's pretty concentrated. It also has PK inside it. Exactly. So it's an all in one. And if you're the type of grower that doesn't really want to fiddle with PKs and boosters and extra additives, this is the all in one go to bottle. Mm. In my hand here, yeah, I hold PK918. Now this ratio of PK, phosphorus and potassium, has become really, really renowned in the industry. The 918 seems to get really, really good results. Pair this with the MetaBoost by Bud's Tree, and those two bottles are going to do a similar job to what Explode does, but probably give you more quality, whereas Explode is much better on the pocket, and for those that need 
easy access to plant life and health. Yeah. Uh, PK nineteen. A lot of people have been following this ratio, and you're going to get really good results. So top top product. Well, I've got an interesting product here as well that I wanted to mention. Ripen by GHG. Now, what this product does is something different. This product's really good for for some if somebody's got a hurry up a crop. Mm. You haven't got enough time. You've run out of time. I know exactly what you mean. Reg doesn't like bell peppers. Yeah. He said, why did we plant bell peppers? Couldn't we have done more chilies? I said I wanted to do bell peppers. He wants that out really quickly and doesn't really want He wants them to ripen up pretty quick so he can put in more chilies in the tent. This is the product he's about to start using. I didn't tell him about the surface because I wanted to see it grow and flourish. Reg found the ripe and was like, can we use this? And you will soon see that they're going to start turning orange and red and ripen up a lot quicker. Very good product. That's what it says on the tin. Right, GHE. Some extra additives that you can use if you've got your base speed down to a tea mm -hmm. and your PKs and your boosters. You might want to start want to enhance the aromas and the oil content of your plant. So this is Terpenator. It's a product that you've had in the shop for a while. Yeah. And I showed you some of the test results from the mint plant that they had yeah. on. What did you say? Really, really improved massively. The mint was absolutely stinky. <laughs> <laughs> stinky menthol. We yeah. love it. This has got a potassium of 0, 0, 004, so like NPK, and it's got 4 on the ratio of potassium. If you don't want to add anything extra to your plants, there's a product which is fully organic and it's got nothing in it whatsoever in the salt range so it's got no n no p no k so that means you can use this in flush this is terpenes also uh, an essential oil intensifier and this is a very good product been getting a lot of good representation on places like instagram okay. a lot okay. of, a lot of uh, love for this product well, what about these two things that i've found knocking around oh the nano you heard about this stuff next i've heard a little bit about them yeah it's supposed to be okay. It's supposed to do an okay job, yeah. This nano silica, what's that all about? Do you know anything about that? So nano silica, yeah, this is essentially putting Rolexes on your plants. It's a great, great nutrient additive. So silica, it's putting the cement into your plant. And what's so special about that silica? Because haven't you just showed me silica before? Well, last week we showed about solar green power, which yeah. is Buddha's tree silica. We actually have it here. I always have silica close to hand. It's one of my favourite additives. It's my favourite additive, actually. Well, you've described it to me as like your your gladiator's shield. What is that balance? And a new way of to start of describing it is your insurance policy. Okay. No one really likes buying insurance because it's not going to get you bigger yields, but it's going to it's not going to prevent you from having a crash, but it's going to make the crash much more comfortable. So if you overfeed your plants dramatically, silica is going to really help prevent them from going excess and if you don't give them enough circle will help as well over watering under watering too high a temperature too low a temperature silica really helps so what's the difference so the difference with the nano is it's really small so it gets into the plants much more readily and the amount of silica that the plant can take up is massively increased so you're getting a bigger insurance policy with nano silica however 75 pound for a box it's quite expensive so you've got to make the decision of putting Rolexes on your plants and spending a lot on your insurance policy or still getting another great silica and using something like solar green power, which is a silicic acid. So what about this nano iron? Nano iron. Now, there's nothing like that on the market, to be honest. Uh, this is the nano's flagship product. Iron, if you look at the leaf, is one of the most important parts of chlorophyll. We increase the iron content. We increase the amount of chlorophyll the plant has got. More chlorophyll, more ability to absorb sunlight. That means it's got more energy for flowering sites, for its flowers and its buds and its fruits, and just more energy for everything mm -hmm. in total. So really good products to use, and nano iron really comes into its own when it starts producing fruits. Yeah. And that's it pretty much. We're gonna go into a lot more detail on flowering products but we're keeping it short and keeping it snappy on the product range. And I think we'll talk a little bit about flower environment next. Okay. So, we're in the flowering period. 
flowering environment. Stephen. Stephen. What? Come back here in a minute, mate. I was getting into my flowering environment. No, no, we're talking about the environment that flowers need to be in. Oh, not me in their environment? No, 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 no. Okay. No. I was getting a little bit hot in there. It is a chilly plant. I know. What do you do with your flowering environment then? Well, you need to adjust it, don't you? Okay, why? Because we've changed from the vegetative phase to the flowering mm -hmm. phase. Now, if we keep the humidity at the same as we did in the vegetative phase, all of our lovely flowers and fruits are going to rot. Ooh. And all the hard work that you've put in it's all for nothing. is wasted. Mm -hmm. So we're going to drop our humidity? Yeah, what do, you recommend, what do you recommend we drop it to? So we can probably drop it to around 45 to 50 percent. That'd be, that'd be okay. Did you know, though, in an ideal world with no microbes, no disease, a plant in flower would actually do really well to 60, 70 percent. Mm. The reason we don't have that humidity is because we are likely to get that disease. So in flowering, we take it down to 40, 50 percent. And this is going to really prevent disease. From what about our temperature? Temperatures can stay the same as in okay. veg. We still want that 23 to 26. Yeah. Some people, when they increase the amount of CO2 they give the plants, can take up to 29 degrees. It's all that interaction with the stomata and the CO2, something we'll go into in more depth in a few So a top tip from me is to make sure that when you go into the flowering phase, you've adjusted your environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this can happen naturally. The humidity is the biggest sticking point for most people in flowering. But you naturally, you increase your extraction in the flowering period because you tend to put more lights in, more lights, more heat, got to get rid of that heat. And when you take out more heat, you also take away the humidity. So these things can sort of play into your hands a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. But lighting, we're going to go downstairs and we're going to have a look at some of the lighting options that you can use to really flower your plants nicely. We've come downstairs because we want to show you a little bit more about the lighting. In veg, we like to use a nice soft light, CFLs, T5s, Metal halides of the 400 watt variety, mm. but when it comes to flowering, game on. Game on. As much light as possible, while still keeping your environment right. What's this? This is NFL Super Bowl game on. This Why is, is the bulb like that? Well, this is a double-ended bulb, 1000 watt. If you want to take your lighting to the next level, which you do do, do 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 do, do in flowering. Did you like the little tune? Oh my god. So you take it to the next level with a 1000 watt double-ended. It's the best. HPS like that, money can buy. This fixture, Revolution Diva, dimmable, new to the market, making waves. But we're going to go into a lot more detail. Light waves. Future. Light waves. Good joke there. <laughs> we're going to go into more detail on future episodes on lighting. But before we do, I'm going to direct your eyes to the ceramic metal halide. An important point to make because it's quite hard to find this information online. Philips, the best that money can buy, ceramic metal halide. Now, when you're in veg, it's good to use a daylight bulb. That's the daylight bulb, a little bit more blue in them. But when you come to flowering, the aggro that you want, it's got more red, and it's gonna help really push out the most amount of weight when you're flowering. Are you having a little nosy at the bulbs? You know what I like, uh, you know what I'm like. You're a professional unboxer in your past life, aren't you? How would you get it out? It's because it's Phillips, it's really tight in there. Sneaky. Different to most bulbs. Very. It's got a different type of pin fixture. So do you have to screw that in, do you? Pop it in, turn once, and it's in. But it's for use with ceramic metal halide ballasts, or CDM as we call them, three one fives. And if you can see behind us, this large shade has got two of these bulbs. Agro and daylight, and we're going to be able to show you in a few months' time what the power of these bulbs can do on a veg and a flowering plant. Okay. So, I've item. got something else. This is oh, this is the additive of lighting, isn't it? Let's put these bulbs. Up this down. is the additive. So, this is the Solus Tech 10K bulb. What this bulb is for is to enhance the oil production. Mm. Okay. So. Some people like to use this in the last week of flowering, yeah, but it especially comes into its own when you're in flush. This bulb is part of a light diet, and we're going to go into diet. that on a bit more on light. Is that like having your five a day? Five a day. Okay, we're going to leave that for a separate episode, though. Yeah, definitely. I can really get my teeth into it. Definitely. You promise? Promise. 
Okay. Let's Pinky go back promise. upstairs then. Right, you see, everyone's seen that full episode on lighting. Let's get back upstairs and finish off. So, I enlightened you downstairs, didn't I? You lightened me. I lightened up your life. Oh, thank you. As always. But we've come back and we've come for the reason we grow plants in the first place. For the harvest. harvest. Exactly. What have we got? Just a selection of the chilies. These are some super hots. A day to have a bite. And <laughs> no, I didn't think you would. No chance. We've got a whole <laughs> evening to get through. Yeah. So, harvest the critical point. You can veg your plant as well as you like. You can flower plant like a professional. But if you don't harvest your plants properly, it can all go to waste. So we've got just a selection of chilies here. We've got a lot more to harvest over the coming weeks. Yeah. And we're going to dry these chilies on the drying racks that we'll show on future episodes. And the drying process is just as important as well. Do you remember the tobacco labs that you used to run? Yeah. How important was the drying process? Key. It was fundamental because if you didn't dry the tobacco leaves in the right process, they would crisp and basically go brittle and mm. snap and they were ruined then. So the temperature and the humidity within the drying room had to be spot on. Yeah. Pitch black, 22, 23 degrees, 50% humidity. And allow the drying process to happen naturally. Don't force it. If you try and heat them up and try and get them to dry too quick, you're going to ruin it. But you experience this in the tobacco lab as well. And with chilies as well, if you do them too quickly, they're going to lose the potency. So the drying, the harvest and the drying is really important. And really spend your time on it because after spending so many weeks doing it and so much effort it can all go to waste all go to waste so there we go yeah that's us for flowering i think we'll get back to the desk and we'll finish off the flowering episode well that's pretty much it for episode eight flowering i've learned quite a bit have you learned everything you need to know i already knew everything anyway oh thank you it's because the books and everything i've been teaching isn't it definitely not well, all right then, how about you give them your top tips and tricks? Well, I've actually got a new trick that I wanted to show you. It's quite, quite nifty, to be honest. It's not a surprise, is it? Watch this. The magic wand, as I always go on about. Well, this is just for measuring EC. Oh no, I've learned something else. Okay. Have you watched Harry Potter? Yeah. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite good, actually. Hang on a minute. That's a small plant, so this is the flowering cycle. I think you need to finesse it a little bit. Oh, this is a vegetative plant. We're talking about flowering today, though. <sighs> Come on, give it another go. See? You're getting better. I, you know. It's still a vegetative plant, though. There's no flowers or fruits or anything. Can you help me out? I think you need a little bit of science. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit of... Ah, yes. Flower bit. And a little bit of PK. We'll watch this then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you go. like that, don't you? Well, you've gone straight to harvest, haven't you? We're going to leave it there. I don't know what's going to come off the end of that one if we try and take this any further. But it's pretty impressive, though. You like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I yeah. do, I do. It scraps all, all the plant, though, doesn't it? It does, well. Yeah, no more trimming. Yeah, no oh. trimming. No, that's a sick one. Uh, on sale now for double the price. No more trimming. There you go. We'll see you next week. Episode 9. Take care. Bye-bye.